This is Patrick Mamelli from Pestilence, and you're listening to and watching Richard Metal Fan. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Richard Metal Fan Interviews. This is episode number 119, and today's guest we're talking to Patrick Mamelli. He is the guitarist uh, and vocalist for the band Pestilence, a death metal band based out of the Netherlands, been around since the mid 80s. Today we're going to be talking to him about what got him into metal, as well as the history of Pestilence, and much, much more. So without further ado, let's go talk to Patrick. So what's up, guys? I'm here with Patrick Mamelli from the Almighty Pestilence. So how are you doing today, Patrick? Yeah, man. Uh, what's up, man? Thanks for your interest in uh, doing an interview with uh, with us. Um, you know, it's not like we have a new album out, but, you know, we're, uh, we're up to go to... Uh, uh, Latin America tour, and that's the pretty much the news that's happening at this point. Awesome. So, kind of like the format is, I want to do like a rundown of your discography as well as talk about like your journey as an artist from where it starts now. But I want to go to the very beginning. What were the first bands that got you into metal? What made you want to start playing guitar? Well, I started playing guitar at a real, really young age, um, meaning uh, four years old. So I didn't really have a clue what was going on. I didn't even listen to the radio. So I think the first the first band that, that kind of got me into, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, the interest for my, for my music instrument uh, was, I guess it was Deep Purple. Um, you know, and then later on, I just it, it just kind of progressed. I was just noodling on the guitar and um, you know trying to find find out myself. Uh, I'm self thought, so um, I'm not. You know, I didn't take any lessons or anything. I was just noodling around a little bit, and then by the time um, I was getting you know really serious, um, I think then you know stuff like Maiden or Saxon or stuff like that was happening. Awesome. And were you in any bands before starting up Pestilence or was Pestilence your first band? Yeah, my, my one and only band, really. You know, everything that I do, I, I, I devote and, and I devote and, and, you know, just put all my time into Pestilence because I don't think that, you know, you can be really good at something uh, when you have, a, you know, many, you know, many projects going on. So I, 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 I guess I know, I knew at a, at a pretty young age what I wanted to do with music and what I wanted to achieve. So I think I was 16 when I started um, trying to get a Pestilence logo going. Awesome. And how did, how did you get to know the guy is in the, in the band? Because I believe you all formed in 1986. Yeah. I, I think it was a little bit before that, but um, uh, you know, to, to, to just stay a little bit more concrete, I think it was, uh, it was 86. Um I think my drummer Marco he went to the same uh, to the same school as I did so um you know we hung out as metal fans listening to stuff like I think it was early death because some of the guys that we were hanging out were like tape traders so that got got us into tape trading and uh, we got a you know we got a way of getting you know these all these tapes from the states and uh, especially Florida when it when they started you know developing that death metal style. So I think it was Mantas and stuff like that where we're listening to that's like early death and um, yeah that that got us into to that kind of music. Although we liked hardcore music as well, you know, uh, and um, so yeah. Um, Hanging out with the same guys, you know, I, I just bombarded Marco to be the drummer. So he didn't even have a drum kit. So we started, you know, messing around. We got him a kit. And um, um, then it was just me and him kind of practicing a little bit. And then uh, I think we put a, we put out an ad, uh, an advertise, uh, advertisement. And then I think um, this guy called Randy is, is close to the German border where we lived. Uh, he joined and then... Uh, we started as a three-piece, and then I started to, uh, uh, you know, it, because we didn't have a singer, I started doing the vocals as well. So, uh, you know, Pestilence was born. I was doing bass at that time as well. Awesome. And so tell me about, like, those first couple demos you did in 1987, Dysentery and The Penance. Was that, like, something to just, like, like promote your guys until it eventually got signed? 
Well, the, the thing is, is that, you know, uh, I mean, it's just like, okay, what do you want to do with the music? You want to be a band? You want to just perform and uh, do shows? So we did a couple of shows and, you know, uh, it's like people ask us, so where we, where can we find your material? So we figured maybe we, we, we should do a demo. And I'm not even thinking about a record label, just, you know, to sell demos and at the show, you know? So, and um and we saw quite a few demos, and so we figured, hey, let's let's try it. Uh, you know, just to send it to uh, send it to a label. And at that point, I didn't really want to sing anymore. Uh, I just wanted to concentrate on playing playing guitar because, um, you know, as you might know, or some people don't know that it's pretty difficult to sing and play the guitar at the same time, especially if you sing in a rhythmical way that is different from the stuff that you're playing with your guitar. So uh, I just wanted to bang my head i guess and then uh stop singing so we found a singer and that was um now the famous martin van drunen um so and after that um you know uh the guy that was in the band randy he had like some contacts with roadrunner germany and uh we started sending him um you know uh you know the tape and, and say like okay let's try to you know sell it to um the german side of uh, Roadrunner and um, they put us on a um, they put us on a sampler uh, called Teutonic Invasion where there were many bands on there and we were one of those bands and um, the people that bought that they could like they could like uh, vote for what you know what what band do they like most and we got the most votes so we got a record deal out of that one awesome and so tell me about like the making of the debut Pestilence album, Maleus Malevicarum, I probably butchered that. What was like the thought process going into making the debut Pestilence album? Well, at that point, um, you know, we, we really didn't know um, what we were doing. I mean, we were just young kids, you know, we we're the first time in the studio and, um, you know, um, you know, since we were listening to Infernal Majesty, old Infernal Majesty and um early death and slayer and stuff like that you know we we kind of use all the ingredients that we were listening to and, and molded in, in into malaise maleficarum that's the title you just totally destroyed <laughs> Sorry. um yeah so i mean uh, some people consider that as a uh, like a classic thrash album but we you know we had our we had our problems i mean marco had his problems uh with the drum with the drums uh with the drum recordings i mean we didn't have any, any triggers like that you know the drummers have nowadays and all the all the fancy equipment that that you might find in the studio now so uh, for us it was like a a hassle to get our point across musically and um we found out that it's pretty difficult to you know nowadays it's not as difficult but back then it was difficult when you're you know, playing with click track and, and, and stuff like that. We never practiced with click track and stuff like this. So, and the recording was with these old machines, with all these old tape machines. And uh, now to punch in is way different than, you know, when we did it back in the day. So we found it a little bit difficult uh, to adjust to what's happening. And also the time frame. you have to be done in two weeks and stuff like that, you know, because, you know, time is money. So it was, it was pretty difficult from what I can remember. And, um, but we, I, I, we still had a good time anyways, you know, they, they had this, this alcohol machine there. You could buy beers and stuff and it was every day it was empty. So, you know, those guys, those guys like, wow, damn, these Dutch people can drink. So we, we, we thought it was a party and we didn't think of it as, as, you know, as being too serious. And, and, and some people still dig that album a lot, really. Yeah, and I know this year is also going to be is the 35th anniversary of the the album, and kind of like wanted to ask: Is there like a chance maybe we can get a celebration of it somehow? Maybe do a tour, you play it start to finish. Well, you know, the 35th is like uh, it had its 30th uh, birthday as well, and 20 25th birthday. So at one point we did do that, um, but now I think you know with all the material we have out now uh I, I think that the focus should be on uh you know material that was recorded you know uh at a later stage um although we are considering uh playing one or two songs on malayas um when we you know go off on our um 
a Latin America tour. So maybe one or two songs will be played there. Uh, with this with this new lineup, um, um, it's going to be just awesome because, you know, you have to understand that I've had many lineup changes. Uh, and this one is uh, pretty much... Um, you know, the one that I want to stick to because these guys uh, are, are all very talented, very devoted, and I like them on a personal, um, you know, yeah, I just, I like the guys, you know, and they, they, they're very solid, you know, you know, they became good friends, so, and I like that. All right, all right, and when you got si signed to RC the Records, did you start, like, touring outside the Netherlands for the first time, or was it still just local? No, that was. I mean, because of because of uh, the the German guitar player we had at that time. You know, we we had some shows in in Germany as well, uh, and obviously when we did the Teutonic Invasion sampler, um, we got signed. So we did like, I think it was like a, a mini tour with uh, DRI. You know, we opened up for DRI, and we were totally crushing those guys live. They were hating us. You know, it just it, it we were put together with um, you know with bands that you know, there are different styles. So, you know, it was not really much the focus of what we uh, we aim for, but we just, we just, um, we just accepted what we got, you know? So um, I think it was more after the, the second album, Consuming Impulse, where we really started, you know, getting noticed into the scene. And because um, when we did that album, Consuming, that was like the Euro European answer to death. When they came out with leprosy so we had to do something or at least i felt i had to do something as a response to uh chuck's um leprosy um at that time there were not too many bands um uh, you know from that caliber um trying to because it, it, it is a contest really you know you have to you have to try to stay with the with the big ones uh you know so we felt that we uh, we had to do that so that's when it really started happening for us after consuming. Awesome. And kind of like, like going into consuming impulse, because I kind of like two questions at one, because usually with the debut album, you have like your entire life to write it. Right. And there was a lot of hype with the, the debut. And when it came time to uh, making consuming impulse, did you felt like pressure to follow up Milius? And I know this is also released like a year after the debut. Did you start like writing, writing it right after? Um, well, for me, the, the writing situation really never stops. I, I, th I think it, it has, has a learning experience. So I learned from my mistakes in Malaysia. I didn't want to do that anymore on, on consuming. Uh, and, you know, and I'm thinking about the new album, the new Pestilence album now, as we're just like having this, this conversation. So it's always for me like a, a progression from what I've done before. So uh, I knew that uh, we had to come up with a strong follow-up and 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 as we're more uh getting involved into the death metal scene we kind of stepped away a little bit from from the the more thrashy uh type of stuff and we just wanted to play heavier uh like most bands uh during that time frame uh we're going to do so um you know and also uh road racer knew or road runner knew um that there was money to be made so um I mean, we, we we really wanted to be on top of our game and make sure that um, we are the European representation for death metal, you know. And we always were looking up to the Floridian uh, death metal scene because for me personally, I never liked the Norwegian um, or the Scandinavian death metal scene that much. For me, it was too cold. Uh, I kind of really liked the more technical death metal that those bands were doing, like Morbid Angel uh you know and, ben, and dsi well early dsi and, and bands like that uh, yeah and tell me about like consuming impulse i think it's a a great follow-up album especially like all the songs are there like dehydrated what a hell of a way to start off the album well yeah we, we figured we needed to, like a really nice and good opener so uh you know and and um, i think that i think it was when we started recording the vocals for for that album, um, Martin was still singing like he sung on 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 Malayas. and I really had to sit down with him and tell him like, "Ah oh, man, we have to do something else. We have to progress and make sure that the vocals are even more brutal because it was we felt it sounded a little bit like "Let Me Kill Mister" from from Motorhead. It was like more cramped up and everything, you know. 
I told him to open up and open his mouth more and just, you know, just more do the John Tardy thing because, you know, uh, obituary is coming out with slowly we rot and I knew that Martin could do it. So he kind of approached it differently from Malays to, uh, to to consuming and that really helped us uh, putting a stamp on death metal, uh, you know, you know, the, the, the style of death metal. And uh, I think that with Malays, uh, we had a really good chance in, um, you know, set, setting standards higher and not sounding like that because most of the bands at that time, um, except the Floridian scene, they kind of had their own style going. So I figured we needed our own style as well. So I started to realize that for me as a musician and as a composer, I needed to back down and stop listening to all these other you know death metal bands because the way i see it is that you i mean i'm like a sponge so i i would take all these this information and try to mold it into something that is more pestilence but still so would sound a little bit like all these other bands so i kind of quit listening to death metal um you know some fans don't understand some fans are like dude you gotta listen to death metal when you're in a death metal band but for me it's like i really had to and you can see that with testimony that, um, you know, I, I created my own style. And the only way to do that is just listen to your own music and try to top that, you know, try to become a better musician and uh, stay true to your own style. Don't contaminate your, your own style by listening to all these other bands that are out there. All right. All right. And tell me about, like, the next album, Testimony of the Ancients. How is that like going from consuming impulse to testimony? Yeah. Uh, this this was uh, the first time that I started to sing again on on the album as I did on on pre previous demos. It was more like okay, you know, the, uh, Martin was out of the band, and um, you know, uh, there's two things you can do: you can find a singer that sounds like him, or you can do it yourself and do it better. Because I think that um, the direction we were going into, the more dramatic, melodic kind of, you know, death metal. Um, his voice would not fit in. I mean, he fits really well in Asterix now, uh, which is like more slower and whatever. But, you know, Pestilence became more technical and, you know, yeah, we needed a, a different approach in vocals. So I started singing myself and some people say it sounds a little bit like Jeff Becerra on that album, uh, which I think is um, uh, probably a compliment because I just love Jeff. You know, he's got a fucking great voice. Yeah. Uh, so... I think that um, it turned out for the, turned out for the better, um, and really, I I also saw that uh, Roadrunner uh, was more into pestilence because I, I you know I I um, I would get like um, phone calls on a daily and stuff like that. Hey, what's up, Patrick? Blah blah blah. So you know these guys are interested to to work with you, and uh, you know because prior to recording an album, they want the demo. So, you know, we made those demos for them and they are like really getting into uh, the testimony of the ancients vibe that we were presenting to them. So um, I think that was at that point our, our biggest release uh, and that was our our real hit album. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, really happy with that. Yeah, and I just, like I said, I think it's like you guys' more melodic album, especially with like the riffs on like Prophetic Revelation, Stigmatized, Presence of the Dead, and Secrets of, Secrecies of Horror is great. I also love how there's like the occasional keyboards in some some of the songs that gives it kind of like more of a atmospheric vibe to it. Yeah, I mean, I've always liked the, uh, the more um, movie score type of music, so... You know, with the dramatic music and stuff like that. You know, when you're in the cinema and watching a movie, and then the the, the music just grabs you. Without the music, the, the the movie probably would be a little bit less cool, whatever. But the music kind of makes the feel uh, of of the movie. And and for me, it was like, okay, now let's try to incorporate these. And did this, this hasn't been done? Maybe with bands like, let me think, who was doing it at that time. Hmm. Well, I, I'll come. I, I think I, I I know I know one. I kind of forgot the name, but um, n no one was doing it really, you know. So I thought, you know, just incorporate these these little keyboard parts and also these little interludes yeah. uh, that introduce the next song. 
uh, so it, it was a continuous bombardment of of informa musical information that people just like close their eyes and then just go on a journey. I guess you know. Ah, I think it was Nocturnus. Nocturnus used to uh, use keyboards as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I especially love those little little intros. I think it just really just flows really well. Well, it almost yeah. feels like a, like just one continuous song song it's just like every song just like those little intros just flow in perfectly yeah everything is entwined you know and 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 we we tried different combinations and uh i think this is this was the best combination because it was just flowing for into the next song and it's like wow it's just like you know a, a continuum of music yeah and then uh, moving on to the next album spheres and I, I know that this year is also the 30 year anniversary of that that album what was the thought process going to that because i know that was the last pestilence album for a while uh yeah, yeah. i mean uh, for me bitter taste in my mouth when when i'm when i talk about spheres um you know because um I, this is this is actually my worst album um and also because of the feeling that was behind uh, you know the recording and and everything because i knew this was like my death sentence in coming up with these songs and um i think my my relationship with uh, roadrunner road race i think it was road racer um you know came to a came to a halt came to a stop because i was noticing that they were flooding the market with all kinds of death metal bands that they were you know flooding the the, the death metal scene with just to make a buck you know and so all these bands were coming out and for me, I felt Pestilence didn't get the, you know, the focus and the recognition that, you know, a, a record label that gave them Testimony of the Ancients, um, um, you know, the focus that we really, did, you know, really would want in, in becoming bigger. So I, I felt I was not being heard in anything, you know, it's just like, okay, they didn't call me anymore. And it's like, okay, now will you have to do a, a fourth album. Uh, they won a testimony of the ancients part two, um, and I figured, well, you know, if if we're going to do it this way, um, um, there's there's nothing to be, you know, nothing that I can do to make it to make it better, to make the relationship better, because I saw that, you know, as as the the focus was shifting to all these other bands, we just didn't get the the, the, the attention that we needed. You know, they're getting difficult about. Back in the days, you would get like tours of sports. So um, they were getting difficult like that. So it kind of the relationship went a little bit sour. And but they, I figured, you know, I come up with something that is tasteful death metal. That is something that is so out there. It's too experimental for them to sell um then they would probably drop drop us you know so pain in my that's my, my brain stop stop the relationship with road races so i came up with these songs now it's a cult album but but then back then the record label dropped us which i was that was my intention, but also the fans dropped us because they did too ahead of time. That's what they say now. But you know, I did it all intentionally just to get out of the contract. You know, you can you can ask Monty Connor because he he knows that how I feel about that album, and I still feel I got this better. Yeah, you're kind of, yeah, you're kind of freezing a little. Taste in my mouth when I talk about it because a lot of people see it's under the contract. So I was a free man, and after this was kind of, yeah, I was very felt I was let down by the by the scene. But I stopped the longest, I guess. All right, are right, you kind of like froze, froze really, a little bit? I need to take from I need to take a break from the scene. Yeah. I needed a break from the scene anyways, because I, I, I thought it was not going anywhere, um, you know, with Road Racer and some of these other labels just flooding the scene. 
And what happened was exactly what I what I was predicting. You know, the scene kind of died out after that. You know, some of the bands continued, but it was not as hip anymore. And most most of these guys just moved on to to different musical styles, I guess. All right, all right, and kind of like during the breakup, what were you doing in the meantime? <clears throat> um, well, since I've um, since I'm not a dumb guy, I just you know finished my study and just got a got a regular job in finance. Um, I worked for you know uh, certain banks, and um, you know made some good money. Uh, but it took me a while to realize that you know just behind the desk and um, you know working with other people's money and uh, because it. That was all that. Uh, it's difficult to to uphold a, just a regular standard job, you know. So after a while, it started itching again. And um, <clears throat> really, I think it was a band like Hate Eternal that really got me into music again. It's like, wow. From, from the times that I... just quit pestilence something else is happening and you know that, that, that's, that's, that's you know his his riffing kind of reminds me of pestilence a little bit i think he even mentioned it uh once or twice that you know uh that he took some of my riffing style and it's like wow now maybe it's time for for me to step back into it and uh, show them how it's done. And I think that's when Resurrection Macabre was born. Awesome. And what eventually made you decide to start back up Pestilence? Well, you know, I, as I just mentioned, it's it's very difficult for a person that is very creative to just put that creativity on hold. I mean, your mind is just like it's like just tell a painter to stop painting you know it, eventually you'll get crazy he just needs to paint right so i just figured man let's try to re resurrect uh, pestilence and that's why the name resurrection macabre came up so yeah and then um yeah then we just did that and um i think the response was pretty pretty good but i knew that you know i i needed to my approach to record labels needed to change. So that's what I did. I, I, I didn't want to have record deals that are more than two albums. So um, that's what I started to do with, with Resurrection Macabre. And uh, from that one, I, I went to another label just to, you know, just to keep, make sure that this feeling of uh, being imprisoned by a, a label uh, will never happen again to me. Right. Right, and were you kind of like nervous, like making Resurrection Macabre, or being that it is like you guys is like a comeback album? Well, um, not really. I mean, I didn't have to prove anything. You know, I, 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 I did, I did Testimony of the Ancients, which was what, what one of the iconic um, death metal albums. Um, so I didn't have to prove, but I, I never feel I have to prove anything to anybody about myself. You know, so I, I have to make sure I'm a better musician. Uh, the lyrics are better than 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 previous uh, lyrics. Uh, the, the my musical intention, the the intensity, uh, the technique, everything has to be better. Uh, so I always, you know, try to become a better musician. And I think that the changes from from Malays to consuming to um, to testimony and skipping spheres. Uh, going to resurrection is like uh, a continuum of my style and its progression. Yeah, and what was like the first tour cycle for the uh, resur for resurrection? And um, did you like start touring America at all at that point, or was was that later? Yeah, I think it was just. I think it was at that point. It was just Europe. Um, I I did do some. I did do some stuff. Um, uh but mainly europe i think it was 
and uh, we did we did like Hellfest and we did some bigger sorry excuse me did some bigger festivals and stuff like that so we're pretty chuffed uh, you know ourselves that it was quite successful um, we did think about you know the states and um, um, but it was not our main you know we've done that with consuming impulse when we were opening up for for death with carcass wow. so yeah that was that was um i think it was the the legendary iconic trio there man that was such a that was such a great lineup that's a hell of a lineup i would have loved to have seen that yeah i mean you can see i think sean sitka he recorded pretty much all of it so because he went with us he was like our our bus driver and he it's i think it's uh it's uh, available on youtube you can check it out you know that was pretty amazing really yeah i need to but then kind of going into the next album doctrine trend did you feel like more com comfortable now now being like the second album after they're they're coming back um again like a, a lineup change and um I think um, Jeroen came back, uh, you know, um, he was the, I think it was the bass player for Spheres as well. So, you know, I, I knew the guy and then got a different drummer, uh, Yuma van Eklund. And also, you know, Patrick is, Patrick was always there. So, um, new group of people, you know, very talented guys. So, you know, for me, it was just like, every time I have to try to make my point across musically, um with a set of different people and that's, for me that's always like uh intriguing to see how these guys um are translating my music so every personal's album uh is kind of unique because of the lineup changes that occurred every time so uh again going into the studio and you know i'm almost a veteran you know i know what's up i know um what te te uh, technologies is is happening what 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 the because I was producing all my albums and I'm still producing all my albums, uh, I, I kind of knew what's up now and um, it just felt like um, you know just going home because I, I mean I, I really like recording in the studio nowadays. I like the control situation. Life is uh, sometimes difficult. You know, you get technical difficulties or whatever. Something something happens, but in the studio is more control. So. Uh, recording doctrine again i think it's one of these albums that that are kind of maybe misunderstood or not even noticeable because you know there are also other releases i think but maybe it's overlooked because that that album is brutal as fuck man i mean that's just such a such an awesome album with lots of hooks lots of nice leads lots of crazy vocals um, but you have those purists, you know, those guys out there that, 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 that they, you know, they grew up on consuming. And if I make something that is not like consuming, they don't like it. Or if I make something that is not testimony, they don't like it. You know, you kind of, when you were born and you grew up on a certain type of music, that's your picture right there. And, and, and that's your, that's your, you know, that's your picture. You, you, you look at it and that's like you grew up on it. And that's the only thing that, you know, that is the most important to you. Yeah. It's like a picture. Like, and, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the damned if you do, damned if you don't. If don't, if you, if you don't make like some something like that, people will be like, oh, oh, the, oh, why don't you make like a part two? But if, if you try to do that, people say, oh, it just all sounds the same. So, but in, in the end of the day, you got to like follow what you, what your, your guts tell you. Yeah, definitely. Because the thing is, is that, you know, you are, uh, you are stigmatized really in what you do. So better make sure you make good songs because you got to play them for the rest of your life uh, and come up with better songs because then you can play those songs as well. Um, I, you know, I, this band comes to mind, uh, for example, Obituary. Yeah, They've been doing the same stuff since the first album. I mean, they progressed, uh, you know, technically and they became better musicians, but they kind of stuck with their style. And, you know, it's just when you put on their, it doesn't matter which album, even if it's the, the newest one or whatever, it just sounds like obituary. Now, some people will say it's like boring because, you know, they don't come up with new stuff. It's always the same. But they kind of stuck to their own... Um, you know, to their own values and their own, you know, 
musical code which they created and um which is good for them you know because they're very recognizable and uh you know you got these these guys that you know don't like it because there's no progression and other guys they like it because they know what they can expect and that's what uh, with pestilence um i always take a risk because with pestilence you never know what to expect really you know because i always have a different lineup i always have different people around me uh, that are talented musicians and they translate my music in a different way uh, so yeah i mean it's it's difficult i take more risk than most of these guys out there and uh, you know when when i fail i'm the one to blame but if i succeed you know happy me yeah and then moving on to the next album obsidio you know i i think it's a great great album i know that this year is also the 10 year anniversary of that that album i know there's a lot of like album anniversaries this year for pestilence so what was the thought process making obsidio because like i said that's the third third album and i think that was probably like you guys' best album to date at that time uh i, I definitely was the most brutal album because uh you know I, I, like i said you know um when I came back into the into the scene, uh, I, I think I, it was uh, Hate Eternal that got me into it. You know, Eric Rutan and his, uh, you know, his band, you know. So, yeah, and, and I, I wanted to make sure that people understand that Pestilence can be of that caliber as well. And, you know, perform and have a really super fast drummer and play with eight string um, uh, like no other band has done before. Uh, sure, you have Meshuga, but they have more of a gentish style, you know, and we play chords, we play the chords, uh, uh, you know, using all the eight strings, not just like three or four strings. So, um, and that was a, that was a real, um, that was a real thing um, for, for me back then, is just to show we can do the same what we do with six string, uh, you know, performing that on eight strings. And I think it was our heaviest uh, pestilence album. You know, really happy with that. The songs are really, really way more brutal than, you know, uh, all previous albums. Yeah. And then I know you toured for a little bit, but then of course, 2014 pestilence went on a permanent hold. And then I know around that time you did a bit, a new project called Neuromorph. Tell me about that because nobody really ever talks about Neuromorph. Right. You know, and Nurmov is, is uh, uh, because when, when Pestle started, started to get bigger again, then I had to put Nurmov on hold. But Nurmov is also my little baby. And, and it definitely something will come out in that style whenever I get the time around and do stuff like that. Because, um, I, I, you know, in, in my whole musical car career, um, for me listening to for example, jazz and jazz fusion. Um, when I started hanging out with the guys from Cynic, uh, with Paul and Sean, um, they kind of introduced me to this type of music. And, uh, you know, they gave me all the, um, you know, the, the links and hints where to find the good music and, you know, where other people, you know, it takes 20 years to get to find all the, these good bands and all this stuff. So, you know, they, they put me in the right direction. And uh, I think that they kind of molded me a little bit as well. So Neuromorph uh, is like um, a heavy fusion uh, type of thing um, that metal metal hats would love as well. Uh, uh, and it, it'll definitely see the day of light anytime soon. Right. Is there like sort of like differences and similarities between Neuromorph and Pestilence? Or Yeah, well, I try to do something else with where pestilence is more um metal driven and neuromorph would be more jazz fusion driven so uh that would be the main difference uh, also uh, neuromorph will have just instrumental songs and no vocals and if they're vocals they're more like robotic wow and then of course you you, you came came back with with pestilence and you did Hedion in 2018. What was that that recording process like for that? Well, not 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 much different from what I've done. What I've done uh, in the past, it, it always has to do with, um, you know, the the intensity and the expression and the energy that you put into a band, and then you realize you can't survive just by playing music, um, and it's it has become 
much more of a problem nowadays that bigger bands even say, I'm not talking about Metallica and all these huge bands, but I'm talking more like this, this, the sub big bands that, that there is almost no money to be made anymore. I mean, it's, it's very difficult. And that realization, they got me a little bit depressed because a musician or uh, some a creative person just wants to do this. And if you can't make it that way, just, you know, by living off music or living off your, you know, your being a painter or, or, or a writer or something like this, you have to get a regular job. And this internal conflict was always bugging me. So, um, you know, and by the time I did Hey Dion, uh, we stepped away from the eight string and just came back to six string, um, which I liked m much, much better, I guess. And I think that's one of uh, our great albums as well and gets overlooked as well. I have no idea why all these albums get, get overlooked. It, it might have to do with the, um, the record label not putting enough money into that, you know, uh, as you might know, is that Remember back in the old days when Lars Ulrich uh, had a problem with Napster? Yeah. Right? That was the beginning of the end. Record labels needed to find a different um, different way of uh, generating money. And album sales were not, you know, were not happening anymore. Now everybody's streaming, you know. So only the diehard metal fans, luckily, uh, still buy buy vinyl and they buy the cds yeah. but this is only in metal you know i yeah. mean normally just people just stream music you know and so or why not um, both <laughs> yeah but but you know but, but with spotify and stuff you know there's not no money to be made so for the bands it really has to do with touring and merchandise yeah so now if you have a merchandise deal uh the merchandise company will get a percentage or the or, or your label will get an extra percentage so it's very difficult to generate enough money to be self-sufficient and, you know, be a musician. And um, now with um, Agonia Records, um, I have a very nice deal. So um, now I have, a, I have a second job. I have a job and I work at my gym. So I can get, you know, I can go to my gym and uh, work there as well. So, you know, I'm a happy camper. I get my monthly pay from my label. And everybody's happy, you know, and I can make some money touring. Um, that's when the Latin America tour will be happening, uh, I think, in April or something like that. So, yeah, and I'm a, like I said, I'm a huge supporter. I buy all my music. Like, look right here. I buy all my, my music collection right here. Wow, that's that's freaking awesome. Man. That's like 2,700 CDs plus or 2,800. And I've been collecting that's... since I was like 13 and I'm almost 29 now. So I'm not stopping there. <laughs> that's crazy I saw like three, 300 plus vinyls right in the back i see it awesome man yeah <laughs> kind, of, kind of and then of course the last album exitum i know it took like a, a long time to make because i heard there was like delay especially with like the covid pandemic happening yeah i mean don't get me started on that one you know and i and 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 now now i'm you know i've proven to be right you know this hoax fucking almost killed us it killed all uh, uh it killed all music it, it killed all normal life really you know and um it was i think it i was going to go to the states and uh open up for possessed yeah i remember with, that yeah and then right before that uh, they closed down the country and um um you know we didn't go we lost a lot of money because we we already had our uh, merchandise with all the tour dates and all that stuff done uh just going there and then it's evaporated you know and everything our luck everything evaporated so um yeah we just again homebound you know couldn't do anything and that got me yeah that got me pretty messed up because uh, what you know now i have a good label i can tour and but then I can't tour, you know, and I refuse to get vaccinated. So uh, that was that was another beginning of the end right there. Yeah. Yeah. And I ha hated that that shit because I didn't want to like like subscribe to be the new norm because I didn't want to live in the, like a freaking mass covered, like non-contact world, you know? 
Yeah, definitely. You know, and and also what what I really really found then is the the direction the 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 death metal scene, whatever death metal scene was left, was going into. Uh, everything got politicized, you know, and and you know even now bands they 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 politicize everything, you know, and it's now you can't say anything anymore, uh, you know, uh, and, and because you you will offend people, you know, uh, just by saying stuff that you know a few years ago was not a problem, now it's a problem all of a sudden, and also in metal. So when when I when I said I didn't want to get vaccinated, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, in media, social media. People call me a conspiracy theorist, you know, and stuff like that. So I'm like, what's happening here, you know? And also, like, with interviews, they they always try to kind of trick me into talking about COVID and talk about that shit. And then so later on in their interview, they would say, well, this guy's a conspiracy theorist and blah, 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 you know? And I'm like, well, I'm not going to do no interviews anymore because everybody's trying to trick me into saying stuff that, you know, for me is the truth. And other people just dislike, you know, but I, I've been always the same Patrick Mamelli. I've always said what I thought. I always had my heart on my, you know, I always, have, I always speak from the heart. So now what, whatever, is, what's changed, it's the um, politification of whatever, if that's a word, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, it's politicizing, you know, I remember back in the days when metal hats having long hair, wearing the stuff that they were, were kind of outsiders and they kind of, you know, fuck society, you know, we're outside of it, you know, we have our own brotherhood, right, whatever, right? Yeah. And that has changed so much that, you know, uh, it's like, wow, you know, what, what has happened? I hope that one day everything will come back to normal. And um, I still can't tour the States because I've had a bunch of offers um, to come, but I can only enter the country if I'm vaccinated, so I'm not coming, you know? Losing a lot of money with that, but hey, I'm just not doing it. Yeah, yeah, but I heard luckily, I think they lifted all the restrictions, so it should be all good there. It doesn't say it on, it doesn't say on the website of the American embassy or consulate in, in Amsterdam, it doesn't say it. It still says that you have to get vaccinated to enter the country. Hmm. So it might, yeah, yeah, maybe you live in Florida, where the sand is, is Georgia is, is actually. I live in oh, Georgia, Georgia, which is like above. Yeah. It's above Florida. You know, everybody loves the sand is, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, this guy's speaking some truth. And um, yeah, coming to Florida would be no problem. But, you know, I can't just tour Florida, I guess. Yeah. But that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I know we kind of got off on that tangent. But kind of like in the end, I know what's next next like, like i know you're started working on apparently a, like the, the new album is called portal portal so what's the status with the new album um before we will um well we have two working titles because i can't use portals because fucking kirk hammett he made like a a thing where his little whatever mini album is called portals so i don't know uh, i don't want to do that so um first we're going to do like a best off album which will be released this year we're already recording uh, you know as we speak uh it, it'll be called levels of perception and we'll have um we'll have uh, a recording of um a show that we did and we kind of you know make make it sound better and then um it will be uh, I think it will 11 or 12 songs of various uh, Pestilence albums play with this lineup. So they'll get, they'll get a fresh look and a fresh listen. Uh, of course, you have uh, songs like Out of the Body in there, but also a few songs from the new album, Exidium. Um, we have something from Doctrine. So, you know, we have all these songs that we're re-recording, um, put new vocals on them, you know, to make it, sound fresh and then so everybody can know what's up with pestilence and then we're going to record the new album ne early next year um which is going to it'll take me that long because i want to come up with something that is out of this earth that something that has never been heard before um total craziness just over the top with everything over the top with everything so 
My drummer, I think uh, Michiel, he can do it because he's a drum teacher and I tell him and we, you know, we discuss these topics. And I think that, um, you know, a band is like, uh, is only as good as the drummer is. So if and we, luckily we have a very good drummer. So I think that he can pull it off, uh, getting all these crazy uh, patterns going. And uh, it's something that you have never heard before. So I'm, I'm very excited about that one, really. Awesome. So uh, before we go, Patrick, just want to thank you for this interview. It was great to be able to talk with you today. There's just any final words you want to say to close this out? Well, um, yeah, I, I want to say it's like, um, you know, um, it's very, it's very important for people to stick together, stick together in a metal scene um, and, and, and make sure, and make sure this, this type of music never dies, you know, and, and there's a lot of new guys coming uh, that don't know death metal, they they grow up on death core or whatever, you know, um, you know, try to teach them where it all came from, you know, and you know, these kids, they don't have any respect anymore. It's like a generation of swiping and, uh, and, and whatever, you know, but it, it's for, for these guys, try to introduce them to the, you know, to the good old music. I mean, you got a, plenty of CDs over there, you know, and make sure that everybody, yeah, it gets to where where is where it all started. You know, it started with possessed. It started with venom. It started with Chuck. You know, just let's keep that let's keep that up and make sure that everybody knows that you know, this is a style that never will die. Awesome. So everybody, Patrick from Pestilence. We'll see you next time. <laughs>